We've seen what it looks like when a faculty member submits a request through Leganto to us. So now we want to follow up on what happens to that request when it is sent. Like where does it go and how do we handle it? So uh, right now I'm inside Alma, obviously. And when you log into Alma, what's going to happen is that you're going to go to Fulfillment and you're going to click on Reading Lists. And this is where you're going to find the queue of courses that have been, or reading lists for courses that are in different statuses. So some of them are complete, some of them are being prepared, some are ready for processing. Um, you can see that when I click on that, it took me to an Assign to Me tab. So the way we're going to start uh, by handling this is uh, assigning reading lists to people to work on. So that way uh, we can make sure that we're managing the process and the new system effectively and we just want to keep an eye on that to get while we get started. So uh, when you log in and go to this, you're going to see the reading lists that have been assigned. Some of them, when they're complete, you'll know, okay, that reading list is complete status at least, so it's active and live. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that nothing else can happen to this list. So if a faculty member later on adds a new resource or has a question, uh, there might be an alert. So you can see that there's a little check mark over here. So alerts tell us that um, there's some new action that's happened to this reading list that we need to follow up on. Um, so I'm going to jump over to all reading lists instead of the ones that are assigned to me just for this video. Uh, and I'm going to look at the reading list that was sent. So here is um, the list that we looked at before. And just to pop back uh, and take a peek, this is the list that we looked at in the last video. So it's got five items. And those five items are also um, listed at the, uh, in Legato or sorry, in Alma. So I'm going to go and click on the menu and I'm going to select work on. And that's what we're going to do to be able to start doing something with the list. So uh, there's a lot of information here and the trick is sort of focusing on the essentials. Uh, and the first thing I want to point out is the status. And you can see that right now it's ready for processing. So when a list is sent to us for the first time by a faculty member, that means that um, that status is ready for processing. So um, you can click on this and see the other statuses that are available. So being prepared, um, that means a faculty member has started working on a list, but it is not yet um, been sent to us. Like So there's still sort of, it's a work in progress for them. Um, you can also say complete, and there's a few other options um, that we're not going to really focus on right now. The important ones are sort of complete, so when you're done working on a list and uh, you think it's finished, you set the status to complete. Um, and then the default status when something is sent to us is being prepared. Uh, the publication status of the list is draft right now, so that's another thing that's important. That controls the publication status, the visibility of the list to the user base, to students, basically. Um, so when a faculty member chooses to publish a list, so if I um, jump back over to this list, you can see that I have an option right here to publish the list. Uh, as I mentioned before, publishing the list sends it to us anyway. So if they publish it and they haven't set this, hit the send list button, it's still going to send it through to us so that we have to do something with it. Uh, we can alter the status at some point if we need to. Uh, but what publishing does, it essentially says that this list is going to be visible to those people who um, should have access to it. So I'm going to jump back over here and you can see that I can change that status here. And there's different types of um, statuses that you can see. Uh, core students, all students restricted, etc, etc. The one that is the default status, which we're going to start with, is anyone restricted. And what that means is that anybody can see what is on the reading list. So if I am a staff member sitting at the desk and I'm not in the class, I'm not the faculty member, uh, I can see that and look the list up and see what items are on it. But it's restricted because if there's any files or copyrighted materials that shouldn't be distributed, I won't be able to access those or files. Um, anyone full would be wide open. So uh, anybody who goes into Legato would be able to see and access everything on the list, which we don't necessarily want, obviously, in most cases. So again, the default status, what we're going to choose for anything when it's published is anyone restricted. 
All right. Um, these things uh, are fine. The reading list, visibility, start date, and end date. Uh, that should go and piggyback on the availability dates that are set for the course, and I'll talk about that later. Um, because then we don't have to necessarily set that on this end. So we don't have to worry about setting those particular parameters. All right. If I scroll down, what I'm going to see then is the list of citations. Um, I can also see the courses that this list is associated with. And so one thing to keep in mind is that um, the system distinguishes between a course and a reading list that is associated with a course. So it is possible for us to have a reading list that could be associated with more than one course if, if needed. Um, so those two things are kind of distinct from one another. Uh, the owners of the reading list, so that's important. The owner is the faculty member typically who is associated with that list, so we can see who that person is if I click on it. So if I click here, I can see that um, I am uh, the person who owns this list. Uh, notes is important um, because that will tell me if there's any general notes about the list, so information that the faculty members wanted to communicate to us. And recent changes is nice because that tells us when things have happened to this list and what dates uh, that those things happened on. Okay, so I'm going to focus on uh, the citations right now and we'll come back to some of those other things later. Okay, so my goal obviously is to make sure that the things on this list are um, accessible to students ultimately and ready to go. And we know that there are different types of requests that are on this list. And uh, being this is a small list, I can proceed just sort of one by one and tackle them uh, as they come up. If I had a larger list and I wanted to say filter and focus on certain types of things on that list, um, there are ways I can do that. So um, one, for example, uh, I can um, look at material types. So if I just want to look at the books or the CDs or the DVDs on the list, I can do that. Um, I can change and look for things that have an outstanding copyright status. So um, one important thing is a digitization request. So if someone says, I would like chapter two copied and put online, um, I can change uh, and search by waiting for approval. And I'll do that right now. And you can see that it eliminates from the list temporarily, just for the view, um, the other readings and shows us the one item that has an outstanding copyright status. So let's take a closer look at that citation. So I can see that it's a book, um, and I can also see that there's a copyright status uh, indication here, and it says waiting for the approval um, slash digitization uh, flow. There's some other things, I'll click on that in a moment, but I can see um, some other information. So this is a book we own, and this is where uh, its location is, and uh, this is its uh, call number. And I can also click on alerts. And alerts um, will provide you information of various kinds about the citation. So you can see it tells us that there's a digitization request in process on this item. Um, it could also indicate to us that there's a note from a faculty member. So that's another possibility. Um, if I go back and just I'll show you this briefly, but we'll focus on communications with faculty in the system a little bit more in a separate video. But just so you know how it works, uh, on any given item, if I were to click on this, there is a library discussion option. And uh, I can, as a faculty member, click on this and send a communication to the library down here, sorry. Um, however, uh, let's take a look at this one. So there's already a library discussion item on this, and if I click on it, you can see uh, the note says, please place on two-hour reserve. So we know that this item is a two-hour reserve request. So if I jump back to Alma for a moment, uh, you can see that uh, under the alert tab, if I had been looking at that item that uh, had the discussion item, instead of a copyright uh, request, what I would see is a, there's a new note associated with this item. So being we're looking at a copyright request in this case, uh, I'm gonna stop the video now and just sort of look at the copyright and digitization workflow um, as a separate little video. So what we've seen so far in this one, just to recap, is that um, in, in Alma, we're going to have a fulfillment queue. 
And if I go to reading lists, um, I'll have uh, a list of reading lists that have been assigned to me to work on. If I want to work on any of those lists, I click the work on button and then um, that will take me over to the uh, reading list for me to work on. So I'm just jumping back to the list that I looked at before. Um, and then I can change the status of that list, whether it's published or not. I can then work on the different citations in the list and sort them in various ways.